I love full body tracking for VR. For me, at least, full body tracking is a true game changer, whether it's for VR chat, Neos, or Blade and Sorcery. Especially if you're already into VR chat, if you're going to ask me if full body tracking is worth it, my answer is straight up yes. Absolutely. If social VR or roundhouse kicking people in blade and sorcery isn't your cup of tea, however, I understand. But the problem that we've faced so far is that it's commonly known that full body tracking using Vive Pucks is really only usable on an HTC Vive or an Index or some other base station tracked headset. And the alternatives using Vive tracking pucks, like for example, an Xbox Kinect for full body applications, while a lot cheaper and work out of the box with an Oculus headset, just aren't so great at the end of the day. Well, I'm here today to tell you that full body tracking works works perfectly fine on any Oculus headset, whether you have Rift, Rift S, or Quest. And not only does it work, but it works great and it's super easy to set up. And I'm getting tracking quality nearly as good as when I'm just using my Valve Index as my main headset. This will serve as a complete start to finish guide for everyone interested, and I hope this can serve as a decent resource for everyone wanting to do this, but don't know where to start. So let's get right into it with everything that you need. For this application, I'm actually going to be using my Oculus Quest along with Oculus Link to connect my headset to the PC. It doesn't matter whether you're using a Rift, Rift S, or ALVR, or like I said, a Quest. The steps and procedures are the exact same. In terms of other hardware needed, you're going to need one to two base stations. You can only use one, but I'll warn you that tracking will not be perfect, and you'll pretty much only be tracked from one direction, so getting two is highly advised. I've also heard some people say that you practically need base station 2.0s here, but that's flat out wrong. To prove that point, I took down my 2.0s, and I have the cheaper, more widely available base PlayStation 1.0 is up, and it works just fine. Next up, you're going to need three 2018 edition Vive trackers with the blue logo. The gray logo only works for 1.0 base stations. The blue logo ones work for 1.0 and 2.0. These run at about $100 each, but occasionally you could find them just a little bit cheaper. Trackers will come with everything you need, including the wireless dongle needed to connect it to your PC. And finally, you need some way to strap the trackers to your body. Here I have the Track Strap Pluses, which are awesome because they have a built-in battery bank that allows me to be in full body for a lot longer. But the kit is also $100. So if you're on a budget, you can get either the standard track straps or even make your own. I've seen people do that too. Then of course, you need your Oculus headset and that's it. Now for the actual setup. The very first thing you're going to want to do is probably the hardest part of this whole tutorial and it only gets easier after this. Go to the place where Steam VR is installed. And for me, that's Program Files x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and Steam VR. Then go into Resources, Settings, and you'll see a file called Default. Open it with Notepad and there are two lines here you want to edit. Don't worry, this won't break anything if you do it properly. First, find the line require HMD and change true to false. Then go to activate multiple drivers and change it from false to true. All this does is allow SteamVR to start up without a headset connected, which will make what you're about to do way easier. Moving forward, I'll have timestamps in the description to different sections of the tutorial in case you've already synced your Vive trackers. But now we should set up our base stations, and if you've never set them up before, it's actually pretty easy. First, plug them into the PC via USB, then start Steam VR. You're going to have to update the base stations. After the update, pick two corners of your room or play space that have an outlet easily accessible and are within line of sight of each other, and mount your base stations as high as possible. You can also use stands like these if you'd like, but due to how fragile the base stations are, I'd recommend just picking a high spot on your wall and leaving them there after that. Like I said, all they need to be able to do is to see each other and be in opposite corners of your play space. After mounting the base stations, plug them in. Moving forward, you're not going to want to move the base stations at all while they're plugged in. Moving parts plus extra motion equals broken base stations. Next up are the trackers. Everything is the exact same as setting up the pucks normally. Open up your trackers, plug in the USB dongles, go into Steam VR, devices, pair controller, select I want to pair another type of controller. We're going to do this one at a time. So hold down the Vive logo button until the light comes on, then hold down the button again. The light will flash and then turn green. This means that the Vive tracker has been synced. More than likely, you're going to have to update the tracker. So plug it in by USB, complete the update, and repeat those exact steps for all three trackers. If you did it correctly, all three trackers and your two base stations should show up on Steam VR. Now it's time to get Oculus tracking to work with the base stations. If you start everything up right now, the trackers will be all over the place and look like they're 20 feet away when they're obviously actually not. This is because the play spaces used by Oculus and Steam VR aren't in sync and use different methods for calculating a default space. To get this fixed, we're going to need a software called OpenVR Space Calibrator. Link will be in the description. Download the most recent version and install it. Now plug in your Quest or start up your Rift and start Steam VR. This is important here just for 
for the sake of ease, but turn off all your Vive trackers except for one. Now run the OpenVR Space Calibrator application. You should see your Oculus controllers and headset on the left side and a single Vive tracker on the right. Select the right Oculus controller and the Vive tracker. Then select slow calibration as in my experience, the quality of the calibration is overall better. Then press calibrate. While the play spaces are calibrating, you're going to have to put your Vive tracker on your arm while holding the right controller and move in a figure eight pattern. There's nothing special or tricky here, but the different motion and rotation points recorded on both the Vive tracker and the touch controller are put into the software to calculate the correct synchronization of the play space. The calibration will finish and at this point, the two play spaces should be totally calibrated. You can now turn on your other two Vive trackers and they will automatically be brought into the updated play space. For this guide, I'll bring us into VRChat now and I'll show you how to apply your full body tracking to an avatar. The process is practically the same for other applications like Blade and Sorcery though. And once you have the idea down in VRChat, it should be pretty easy to apply that knowledge in other games. Load up VRChat, specifically the Steam version of VRChat after having your play spaces calibrated and Vive trackers turned on. Actually wearing the tracker should be pretty self-explanatory as there's one strap for each foot and one belt for your hip. And the position of those trackers should correlate with the white spheres that appear while your avatar is T-posing. All you have to do now is align each foot sphere to the corresponding leg on the model and have the hip sphere around the same area on your avatar. Once that is done, press the trigger and voila, welcome to full body tracking. You're now one of the very few special people that has an Oculus headset and has real good full body tracking. I know it was expensive and required a few extra steps, but hey, you got it. There are a few problems that you could run into, however. Here are the two main things and how to fix them. One, your hands and your head are tracked fine, but your body trackers are in a different location than you'd expect them to be. Easy, take off the tracker that you used the first time for calibration, open up the Steam menu, you reopen open VR calibrator and complete the same calibration you did back in the guide and that should fix your issue. If it does not, try moving around in other ways than a figure eight. The more data points that the software can collect about the position and rotation from both play space devices, the better. And the next issue is that some avatars are not scaled normally. Some have giant legs and a tiny body or other times are hardly even humanoid. You'll find that sometimes matching up the tracking points is almost impossible. And as a full body VR user, you're now going to want to have a little piece of software called Steam VR Advanced Settings. Link in the description as always. Download it and install it. And now when you open up the Steam menu, you'll have a little advanced settings icon. Using this tool, we can further fine tune our play space to an avatar specific proportions, like with this avatar. If I were to confirm where my trackers are from default, the results aren't exactly pretty. But if you go into advanced settings, key binds and bind reset offsets to the X button on the controller as a toggle button and right hand space drag to the B button on your right controller as a button, you'll notice that you can now move your tracking balls around during the avatar calibration. Now you can match up your arms, legs and hip to exactly where it needs to be for a well-functioning full body tracked avatar. This tool is even more useful for doing things like laying down on a virtual couch when you're actually on the floor in real life or sitting in a chair that you'd normally be clipping through. If you need to go back to the ground, then just press the reset button on your left controller and you're all back to normal. If you followed all of these steps, you should have a fully functioning system of full body tracking while using an Oculus headset. If demand is high enough, I may do a video in the future about using the knuckles with the Quest, which is also something possible using similar methods. In the past, if someone that had an Oculus headset asked me what they should do if they wanted full body tracking, I would just say that you're better off selling your headset and getting a Vive or an Index. But now that I'm aware of how easy it is to set this up and how well it works, I can easily recommend someone picking up Vive trackers, a couple base stations, and doing this instead. Does it make any sense from a financial perspective? Absolutely not. I mean, it'd be cheaper just to go buy a Vive or Index at the end of the day. Total for all your tracking components, it's gonna cost you anywhere from $450 to $600 if you buy things new. So would you still be better off getting a Vive or Index and then buying full body tracking? Probably. But if that's not an option for you, or like I said, you really love your CV1 Quest or Rift S, then doing this is completely viable and will work just as good. If you do have any additional questions related to setting this up, you can always ask in the comments or you can join up in my Discord server and I'd be more than happy to help with anything you need to get this working. Full body tracking really changed my entire outlook on social VR and playing VR games in general. And if you're on the edge of thinking about it, I'd totally say just go for it. Once you see yourself move in a mirror or kick the shit out of someone in Blade and Sorcery, you'll be glad that you did. I'll also be showing off what this exactly looks like on stream today, so hop in and check that out. 
I hope you enjoyed this little guide slash tutorial and I hope it helps out a ton of people taking their first steps in VR with actual legs. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, Thrill Out.